have a significant announcement that uh, Mo will make and uh, discuss. So I'll turn it back to you, Mo. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, I thank you all as well. Uh, I know this is short notice, but you know, after, after a successful 2021 season, and it just ended a little over a week ago, we have determined that we have determined that we have a philosophical difference in the direction that our major league club is going. We feel like at this time that it is best for us to end our partnership with Mike Schill. So I know I notified him earlier today that um, he has been dismissed of his duties. At this point, I will open it up to questions. Thank you. So can you describe the nature of the philosophical differences the organization had with Mike at this time? Not really. Um, all I can say is 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 that uh, you know where we felt the team was going, um, we were struggling to get on the same page, and and you know ultimately uh, with him having one year remaining left on his contract, we could have certainly gone into uh, 2022 with with him. Um, having that over him and we just decided internally that it would just be best to, um, to separate now and um, then take a fresh look as we enter the new season. Has there been a determination made on the status of the rest of the coaching staff? Uh, the rest of the coaching staff, I, I am hopeful, will return. Um, there are a few individuals that, that have um, their contracts expiring shortly, but I will begin in earnest next week to, uh, to touch on that. Amy Wu? Mo, well, I was wondering if you could expand on some of the philo philosophical differences between the two uh, the two parties. Not really. Um, as, I, as I said, uh, you know, there's reasons behind why we do that. And, you know, what direction we're trying to go with is, is something that, you know, we tend to keep private anyway. Um, but just the overall health of this club, we feel very optimistic as we look at 2022 and just felt like the leadership downstairs um, needed to be on the same page. Thank you. Benjamin Hoffman. Mo, uh, can you describe, uh, was this past season a success in your opinion for the St. Louis Cardinals or how would you rate what just happened for the St. Louis Cardinals? Yeah, I think, uh, as, as I stated before, I think uh, 2021 it was it was a real success and, and something that um, for all of us that were part of the organization are going to take enormous pride in. Um, anytime you 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 go on a 17 game winning streak and and actually create history for your organization, it's something that you you take enormous pride in. Um, a lot of the times, these types of decisions aren't solely based on on just the season or 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 specifically more, more to the point, it's, it's directionally where we want to go. And so, um, you know, these decisions are, are, are never easy. Um, but, you know, ultimately we feel like this is something we had to do. And can you describe the importance of, I guess, preserving the young arms that the St. Louis Cardinals have notably in Alex Reyes and some of these young arms that have been used at the major league level and preparing them for the following seasons, the importance of that. Well, it's very important. I mean, obviously, we're excited about having, um, you know, four quality starters that we think we're, we're pretty comfortable with. Obviously, with the emergence of Woody, that, that was great to see at the end of the season. But, yeah, we're going to have some difficult decisions on how to think through Reyes, Hicks, and, and others in terms of their role and how to use them. Um, this past week, we did not really address that. We did discuss it. But, uh, um, you know, ultimately, uh, um, we'll see how things Sort of develop over the winter. Thanks. Zach Silver. And Mo, I guess now as you look for a new manager, what are some qualities or, or what are some directional ways you want to see the big league club going? You know, as, as, as you guys can imagine, I mean, things have sort of um, kind of moved quickly over the last week. And in terms of, of what we're going to look for, you know, I do think we have some quality internal candidates. Um, so ultimately, I'll just sort of, my staff will take the next uh, 
few days to sort of catch our breaths and then see what that next step looks like. Jim Hayes. Mo, understanding that you don't want to um, discuss what the philosophical differences are, I was wondering if you could just give us some context for these differences that uh, became increasing over recent time, or is this sort of ongoing differences without saying what they are? Was this something that came up later, or has it been sort of going on for some time? Yeah, candidly, it's been something that just popped up recently. And, and so, you know, ultimately, as I stated, I mean, you certainly can always go into next year with, with a, a manager on, on a one-year deal. And, you know, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But given, given all the, the sort of directional parts that we're trying to pull together, it just made more sense for us to, to cut ties now. Thank you. Ben Fredrickson. And Mo, did this conversation as parting of ways stem from conversation about an extension? And had you guys offered one to Schilt this offseason? Uh, I had no discussions on an extension to this point. Um, you know, candidly, uh, um, you know, as we were looking to the future, we were trying to just understand what we wanted that to look like. But um, as we looked into things further, had further discussions internally, we again, we just decided that we were going to make this decision. Were some of the differences that were, can some of them be pointed to the offensive direction? And we saw kind of a pivot in the offensive approach this year. Um, is that tied to the way that looked and the way it needed to look moving forward? Um, again, I don't want to get into specifics. Um, you know, I'm not finger pointing here. Uh, the decision we made has been made. And, uh, you know, ultimately, um, we have to stand by that because that's the decision we decided on. And so these are not easy. Uh, Mike Schilt was, uh, was in the Cardinal organization a long time um, on a personal level. I hired him back in 2003 on Christmas Eve. I think I've hit a job offer to him and uh, he entered as a scout, um, went on to uh, switch over to player development, ultimately worked his way up through the minor leagues and became a major league manager. And, uh, it's an amazing accomplishment uh, given his, uh, his story. And so, you know, it's, this was not something that we came to um, quickly. It was not something that we just jumped onto, but I will say that um, where we are is, is what we felt was in the best interest of the world. Derek Gould. Mo, maybe this is a question for both you and Bill coming at it from different angles, but I'll ask you first. You guys have for years talked about how continuity is a strength. And in a lot of ways, Chill personified that in the sense that he grew up in the organization like any player. I'm wondering if since this is a rupture of philosophical differences, what that if you could square that circle for us in the sense that here's a guy who has been part of the organization for so long. How could there be such a parting of philosophical differences, differences if that's a strength? Well, I still think um, our continuity is a strength, um, but you still have internal issues that can happen. And um, people evolve, people change, um, ideas change, philosophies change. And, and ultimately, uh, um, it's Bill's responsibility, my, respons my responsibility to, to try to keep the organization going directionally where we'd like it to. And, and so, um, you know, again, these are not easy decisions. It, we didn't come to it quickly. Um, I think we're, we're, we're proud of the fact that we've had that continuity. We're proud that we've had the ability to promote from within and have people from our system advance. And, you know, candidly, I, I hope we can continue to do that. You, uh, this is two consecutive managers that you've brought sort of from internal realms. Does that maybe in, encourage you to look outside in this next time? Would you, would you, you might put an emphasis on looking from outside the organization? I'm not really prepared to answer that at this point. Um, I, I think we had to get the first step of this accomplished, which we've done. And now we will begin huddling and, and deciding what, what makes sense for us moving forward. Randy Carriker. 
Mo, uh, in regards to the roster that you put together and gave Mike Schultz to manage this year, how did you feel about the way the, the group was managed? I felt the team was, was managed well. Um, you know, overall, I think, you know, the roster evolved. As you know, um, we had to make some mid midseason changes because the original um, version of what we broke in spring was not working ideally. Um, but ultimately, I, I think uh, given the way we finished and how we played, this is not a reflection simply on, on wins and losses, right? It's not simply a question of were you happy with, with how the game was managed? It really was more at a higher level of where we saw the team going and where we wanted it to go. And, and you, uh, in your last answer, you talked about philosophies changing. Would you say that in regards to these differences, your philosophies have changed or over the course of years of managing the Cardinals that Mike's philosophies changed the cause of this divergence? Well, I'm not going to speak for him here, but I'll speak for myself. And yes, my, my view on the game and, and how you do things is always changing. Um, I'd like to think of myself and, and the staff as someone that's, you know, they're, that we're always looking to, to get better and get smarter Um you know, not just follow trends, but try to help create some if, if that's at all possible. But, you know, ultimately, it's it's our responsibility to, to put a quality product out there and how we go about it and the resources we use to do that is incumbent upon all of us. Thank you. Mark, your point? Hey, Mo, what, is player uh, input at all part of this decision? And then also, can you describe the nature of the conversation you and Mike had? Was he shocked? Um, not going to get into who I spoke with or exactly the um, details of, of how we got to this decision. Um, I will characterize my conversation with Mike Schilt as, yes, he was very shocked. And Mo, if people around town, are, are people reading this correctly that it's a surprise move? Did, I mean, did you come to this decision in a short amount of time or had this been building? Um, I would say the conclusions came rather quickly, but it was something that um, it was, was brought to my attention over time. Katie, did you have a follow-up? Katie Wu? I do. Mo, when you came to this decision, how much did 2022, which has long been estimated as this team's biggest window of contention, factor in on, on this being a must next season being a must win season? Uh, not at all. Um, it, this again is not was not a decision solely based on like wins and losses and anything. Thank you. You're welcome. And Fredrickson. Bo, is, is Jeff Albert going to be back as the hitting coach? And, and, and I guess to ask bluntly, was, was the tension between him and Schilt at times part of the reason that led to this? Um, as of right now, Jeff, Jeff Albert is under contract, so I would expect him to be back. And in terms of uh, that being the sole reason for this decision, the answer is no. Jeff Passon. Hi, Mo. Um, I just want to make sure – and clarify this this was entirely a baseball related decision correct or were there other factors uh aside from baseball that led to it oh no this is a baseball decision Derek gould mo it, it's unusual i have a question for mo and for bill then um mo it's unusual for teams to make an announcement of this enormity on a day where there's also a National League playoff game. Does that speak to how rapidly things change today? I think that's a fair question or statement, yes. Um, and did not see, did not want this to, to be something that would drag off into next week or, or when we would have had that, that one-day window. So uh, both Bill and I um, um, requested permission to do this uh, so we could do this today rather than push it out further. Bill, I wanted to ask you what this says to the commitment you've made to the philosophy spearheaded by the front office at this point. I know you don't make these decisions lightly. I think you've told me before that you prefer not to fire people. 
people and that it goes to a link. I wonder what this says about the commitment you've made to the front office and the philosophy you see them steering the team. You cut out a little bit there at the end, but I think what you're asking is, how does this uh, relate to the philosophy of the front office? And I think, you know, Mo said it well, this is based on, uh, you know, differences uh, between uh, Mo and his group and, and the manager and it's, um, uh, you know, didn't have anything to do with this year and, and uh, you know, you also referenced continuity before. I, I value continuity, but, uh, you know, I value continuity if we're continuing to head in the right direction. So, um, you know, this is a decision that everybody bought into, and uh, that's kind of the way it played out. So while the team is going through that historic winning streak, was this something that you were – what was on your mind? Was this uh, a reckoning that you knew was on the horizon? You asking me? Yes. Yeah, I'm asking you as this team is going through the winning streak. Are you? I mean, I, I wasn't actively thinking about the managerial situation at that point in time. I mean, obviously, I was engaged in all the games. Uh, so, you know, Mo and I have, have conversations, if not daily, you know, often about the direction of the organization and so forth. And, uh, you know, when the season ended, we – huddled and um uh, you know this is how it came out i guess maybe a better way for me to ask it, and this will be my last question is were you and mo if you want to chime in on this i understand but during that winning streak were you aware of a gap growing in the philosophical differences between the leadership of your team yeah i mean i don't want to get into you know when and how and you know when did it start and when did it end uh, i think uh i think mo said it pretty well this is uh you know, something that we came to and, and uh, you know, decision was made. Ben Hockman, did you have a follow? I, I did. Um, I guess my question is if in regards to the term philosophical, I mean, can you explain what I'm missing here? Where if you're the boss of somebody and you have a philosophy, why can't you just tell him to do that philosophy i know that's a very basic thing but can you respond to that mo uh sure um i can tell you to like jump out of your car right now and you may choose not to um you know it's you know people can think on their own people can make decisions on their own and you know a lot of this is about you know creating autonomy but there are certain things that we would like to see done and you know ultimately uh, really touching on more of Derek's point of, of the continuity of thinking is it is evolving. It does change over time, but ultimately we just felt we were at a place where we weren't going to have a meeting of the minds. Gotcha. Thank you. Rich, Rick Hummel. Mo, is there a certain type of manager you're looking for now? Um, you know, obviously we feel like the person coming in is inheriting a very good club. Um, so there's kind of two ways to look at this. It's, it's, you know, maybe chasing someone with, you know, experience and success, or it might be someone that just has a lot of familiarity and understanding what we already have. So I think um, in terms of, of what we'll do or the directionally of how we'll do this, it's, it's going to take us a little time to sort through, but, you know, I don't want us to have to drag our feet. I don't want this something to go, you know, into mid-November where we don't have this resolved. Um, so we'll work quickly at this. And in terms of nailing that exact profile that you just asked for, I'd have to say that's still to be determined. Without naming names, do you have a candidate or two on your current coaching staff that would be under consideration? Yes, I think so. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Fredrickson. Uh, Mr. DeWitt, um, were you expecting or hopeful that you guys would agree with an extension with Schilt this offseason? Was that a, a plan for you? And can you speak to, um, I guess, just the idea of this philosophical differences when we saw, you know, a lot of things that Schilt kind of prioritized seem to be things that you guys valued, you know, defense and, um, you know, cleaning up some of the details that had gotten a little ragged um, and how that sits with you. 
You know, I wasn't thinking actively about an extension at the end of the year. I mean, uh, Mike had a contract that goes into, you know, there was another year left on the contract. So you don't really think about those things or talk about them until after the season's over. And, uh, you know, the season is now over and uh, we got together and, and kind of went through kind of where we stood as an organization. And, uh, you know, that's, that's sort of the, the way it played out. And just your idea that the, the philosophical that they couldn't that Moe's group, you said, and, and the manager couldn't get on the same page. Um, it seemed like a lot of the things that, you know, you guys value Cardinals baseball being about were things that the team had done well um, in, in recent seasons with cleaning up the defense, the base running, things of that nature. Um, did, did something jump out to you as being so different that it couldn't be solved? You know, in today's baseball world, it's uh, it's. The business has gotten more and more complicated. Um, you can see the growth in baseball operations and the s- staffs. And, and so there's more to it really than, you know, an element or two on the field. So, and, you know, w- one thing you want to make sure is everybody's on the same page. And, uh, you know, that's pretty critical or you're going to kind of stumble along the way. So, uh, you know, that was part of the discussion that, that we had. Thanks. Jeff Jones. Mo, you've mentioned a couple of times sort of the strangeness of the timing of this, given what's going around around the league today. Was there a concern that if this move didn't happen quickly for you all, that you might miss out on potential candidates who might be candidates for other jobs as well? Uh, no, really the, the the thrust of this was, was more for, for Mike's benefit to just – cut the cord now and not have it drag out and then, you know, be left hanging later. And so it was more of a, a the, the, the speed of this was more to just uh, hopefully benefit him. He, uh, he several times during the season, especially when things were going badly in June, made comments to the effect of, of managing with what he had and doing the best he could with the players he had on the roster. Was there frustration throughout the season between perhaps the dugout and the front office based on the speed or maybe lack thereof from his perspective of outside additions? And did that become a part of this conversation? Uh, no, it did not. Randy, character, do you have a follow? Yeah, uh, Mo, throughout the sport, uh, several front offices have parted ways with managers because of a disagreement as to how to implement analytics. Obviously, you have an ad- analytically inclined group in the front office. How much, if at all, did the implementation of analytics play a role into this? Again, I, I really don't want to start like you know carving out where this philosophical difference became because it's, I just don't think it's fair. Um, you know, look, we we. We, we want things to always work out. You don't ever want to have these types of, of press conferences. You like to everything be rosy, but we just weren't in a spot where we thought we were positioning ourselves for ultimate success, not just for today, but long-term. And so we made a, a very difficult decision, one that we did not come to lightly. And uh, you know, both, both Bill and I and, and others will tell you it's, it's agonizing. It's not fun, but you know, in the betterment of what we think for the organization, we had to do it. And, and Bill, I want to go back to that uh, comment about stability because Whitey was here for 10 years. Tori was here for five. You hi- hired Tony and he's here for 16. Mathene, he's here for five. So you've had a guy for uh, essentially three seasons, Bill. What, uh, uh, how did you react when you got this phone call that uh, Mo wanted to make this move? Well, first of all, I didn't get a phone call. I mean, Mo and I uh, have constant communication, uh, I was going to say throughout the season, but really year round on all kinds of baseball matters. And, um, you know, I'm not going to comment on a point in time where this decision was actually made or, or what our thinking was, but, you know, generally at the end of the year, we all sit down and talk about where we are, where we're headed and, you know, how we think we can do better. And, uh, you know, that's sort of baseball. You, you play it one season at a time, but then you look forward to the future. And so, you know, we have those conversations and uh, you know, so here we are. Thanks, guys. Jeff Passon. Mo, I know you won't talk about the philosophical differences, but can you 
say what the Cardinals philosophy is and what you would like it to be going forward? Well, look, we are, we're an organization that, that has a, a trust in, in creating a pipeline from, from our minor league system to our big leagues for both players and staff. Uh, we are a, we're, we're a typical organization that tries to stay internal with what we're trying to do. Um, we try to to help individuals grow into these roles, and you know, for where we were in this point in time, we're not making this decision on a reaction of the season. This is a decision that, as we start to look forward, what do we want to most look like, and what do we want? How do we want that to, to be run? And so. Rather than, than for us to sort of debate or talk about these details, again, want the very best for Mike Schilt moving forward, whatever should happen with his career. But ultimately, the decisions that you know, both Bill and myself and some others came to was what we want to do and where we want to go, we needed to go a different way. I mean, some of those things that you're talking about there sound more like player development, which of course the big league manager doesn't handle. Um, And when you talk about philosophical differences, like you understand why we're curious about this, right? If, if you're citing that as the reason for firing him after a playoff season, after a 17 game winning streak, uh, the details there do seem to make, make a bit of difference. Do they not? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm here to protect employees. I'm here to protect him. Um, you know, if he wants to discuss those with you, that's his choice. Thank you. Not mine. Ryan Fagan, Sporting News. Hey, Mo, I just wanted to clarify something. Um, I, I thought I heard you say earlier, I think when Kamish asked the question, is – is there a candidate or two that you have in mind? And if so, could we see this process wrap up quickly? Uh, as I stated, there are some internal candidates that we, we do have confidence in. Um, could it move quickly? Yes. Um, but uh, I want to take a few days to sort of just take a step back, catch our breath, and then uh, um, take a hard look at what that looks like. Thank you. Ben Fredericton. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. So Martin, did you have any follow-up? Martin Kilcoin? Uh Yeah, I did. Yeah. Mo, was there a meeting between you and Mike where you addressed these philosophical differences? And did, was there a chance where he has to either get on board or get off board? Was there a discussion like that where he had you guys address these issues and you basically say whether he's on board or not? Uh, no. It, it, was, it was more of a, a collection of information that ultimately got me got us to where we are. And so, no, it was not a, it was not a open meeting. Had, had you guys met since the season ended in person? Uh, we had met last Friday as a staff. Yes. Brian Kelly. Okay, Ryan, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, Mo, it's interesting that that Mike has been with the organization as long as he has, and now you've got the philosophical differences. Was this something that was possible, say, a week or five days ago? Were you thinking about making this change at that time? I would say, like, in in any decision-making, there's a lot of organic reasons for for things over time. But I would say over the last – five, six days, it was something that came to a head. 